You are listening to this week's installment of the Path of a Believer podcast. Guys, welcome back to another week of the Path of a Believer podcast. Yes. We're happy to have you guys. We're happy that you guys have decided to come again for week number four. On this week's episode, we have a perfect, perfect guy for you guys to see and hear to talk about his testimony. Now, for this week, just before we start, I want to remind you guys that if you guys are listening on YouTube, make sure you guys like and subscribe, leave a comment, tell us what you guys think, tell us you guys' testimonies in the comments. And if you guys want to be on the podcast show, if you guys have a testimony you want to share, we'd love to have you guys here. We'd love to talk to you guys and encourage you guys to share your testimonies, not yes. only with us, but with each other. Build each other's faith, build the foundation of Christ in each one of your guys' life. Let Christ be the first, the last, and the only thing that's so important in your life. He keeps you living. Anyways, moving forward, if you guys are listening on Spotify, make sure you guys drop a follow on Spotify. And if you guys are listening to Apple Podcasts, you can just go and click that subscribe button and leave us a review, and we'd gladly appreciate that. Yes, guys. Make sure you guys leave us a review. Have some fun with it. We want to hear from you guys. I know that we got a lot of people that watched the first and second video, and now our third video is now out. So if you guys have not watched the third video featuring Tim the Worshipper, Amazing testimony, very touching, very loving of a person. You guys need to, you guys need to meet him yourselves. Go back and watch it. It's good. Link's gonna be right about here, somewhere so, there. <laughs> right there. Check somewhere. it out. All right, guys. So in today's episode, we have Phil. Hello, what's up? How you Phillip. been, bro? <laughs> <laughs> so if you guys do not know, Philip is the guy who's always behind the scenes recording. He's the one who's who usually has the MacBook in his hands recording. Uh, the apostolic ministries yeah <laughs> taking care of all that for jazz over there in the background but phil is cre a creator a video content editor a yeah you director you describe yeah. yourself let's, let's hear it from you buddy well i'm basically a one-man band when it comes to the editing portions so i take care of like when you watch a movie and then the credits you just see a whole bunch of editors doing different tasks you know rotoscoping fbfx sound design all that I'm basically trying to do everything at once and um yeah um, i do stuff with uh vasily margitic mm -hmm. he was here in the yeah he was in our yeah, first the first podcast first podcast yeah so me and him kind of so started much. off making youtube videos for fun and now we're trying to do more of a full uh, feature mm -hmm. film stuff uh, like glorified god so what are some of the works that you've created so far like what are some of the titles uh, so people can check it out you know um <laughs> You know, looking back at it now, to kind of cringe, but you know, yeah, everything is usually for an artist, and they look back and they're like, ah, that sucked. Yeah. Um, but I made a few, you know, a couple of videos. Um, you know, me and my friends having superpowers and all that stuff. Yeah. Know, VFX wise, just trying to, you know, experiment with uh, the video editing. I mean, you've done a lot of things for our church and. and, and oh yeah, yeah, yeah. New Year's. For the New Year's uh, videos, a bunch of New Year's videos, you guys did the Godfather Retribution for New Year's. That was, that so was good. Yeah. That was amazing, probably because you were in it. <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah, the, the Godfather ones that we have created, we only made two so far. We're making a third one. Mm -hmm. um, it's in the works right now. We're going to start recording. Uh, by the way, Vasily and Daniel will be in the in the yep, new film, your so. people are gonna be in We're it. Gonna so. Be famous now. <laughs> so the thing we wanted to do with the the Godfather uh, fan films was to have a Christian message that goes along with it. So, so good. the first one it was more like for insolence dies to wisdom. That was the title of it, and mm -hmm. it was for you know the youth, the new generation, to not disrespecting the old generation and. You know, vice versa and uh the second one it was for um it was for uh the putting down your own life for friends like mm -hmm. sacrificing yourself well the second one i know that we had a big watch party at my house is me oh, yeah uh i think i think david was still here uh yeah, was yeah david, da david Shemir. dennis and like we had a bunch of like guys over at my house and my wife and like we were just sitting there on the couch watching the whole thing yeah. it was like 45 minutes long. yeah it was about 45 minutes it was, long, a, it was a really good it was a really if good a film, film if you guys have not yeah. seen the film you guys can easily go search it up on youtube on their phil's channel yeah, yeah. the first godfather watch. we did was uh it was an experimental kind of thing we tried to doing everything in green screen 
okay. we recorded everyone like separately and i had to like piece them together it was a nightmare so <laughs> the second one yeah, is more on this on the location you know everyone's there at once we don't have to worry about that so stuff. taking care of the whole podcast here is a lot easier you would say right <laughs> yeah it's a lot more chill not more you know, yeah, but you have, not you a lot of he still has the other video to yeah, yeah that's true that's yeah. true but um going back a step let's talk mm-hmm. about your journey your life your ministry and how this whole entire thing it ties together and like we see that you see how much influence you have in the community and like how your videos are touching people but where did it all begin how did it all start when did you encounter that always oh, cool relationship with jesus oh well i was born in a christian family you know um like most of us are but uh, i guess it would be around when i was turning 17 or 16 uh is when i started going to this church it's like when i moved to oklahoma uh, I went to this. Wait, you moved to Oklahoma? Yeah, I lived there for a year. A year. I'm, I'm, I didn't even know this. <laughs> <laughs> I lived everywhere, but when I was in Oklahoma, I went to this church, and um, the message that they want they spoke it touched me, and they start calling people out to the altar and pray, and you know, pray to receive you know the Holy Spirit. And stuff. That's awesome. Yeah. And I just started praying, and then I. Uh, it just happened. I just started. Received. Spe- I just received. And I started <laughs> speaking in tongues. I, I don't know what was going on. That was, was kind of, instant. That was instant. I'm like, wow. Whoa. And then you know, I That's started awesome. reading the Bible a lot more often and actually trying to the understand. Started growing right away. Yeah, I tried to understand the word instead of just you know reading it through my eyes and just. That's good, man. So, and, no, uh, that's you're so lucky you're so <laughs> lucky i'm over here like <laughs> four or five weeks of no it was funny because we were um talking about it but god plans accordingly for each person and like i have another thing to share later on in probably a different podcast about how a spiritual birth happens and how born again yeah. happens and how the holy spirit comes down but like for myself three weeks of like endless prayer and like no answers and then all it took was some random guy to just walk up and be like, oh. and I was just like, whoa, <laughs> got rocked by God. And it was just like right there on the spot. And like, well, yeah, God works in mysterious ways, different ways for different people. So. Definitely. I mean, there's like, you know, my situation uh, compared to other people's testimony. It's like they spend years like just trying to receive like the gift and, um, for me it's like i just went to this one service and they're just like hey we're having a service dedicated specifically for this and sure enough like just i'm like lord i give you all this like thoughts that are running through my head about like (laughs) what am i supposed to say all this stuff you know that's running through your head and i'm just like i give it to you whatever you want just let me have that so Um, and yeah sure enough just received it the same way kind of like you so that's awesome bro that was amazing I'm feeling like just felt like electricity you know from oh, my whole body yeah yeah oh, uh, there's so many different uh, I wish we could have like a way to get like a hundred people in a row and just ask every per- like a hundred people that have the Holy Spirit that came upon them and just ask every single person how did it feel like the exact moment of when you felt the Holy yeah. Spirit come down mm-hmm. on you because like I know for me like all of a sudden I just felt this big warm like warmness come all over me and then just the whole entire room just started spinning really wow. really fast wow. and it almost felt like i was in the clouds and i just kept hearing god's voice and god's voice and god's voice and i was just like whoa and then like uh for you i'm not sure how you felt i personally you know i basically had this like surge i guess you could say of electricity with heat the bigger more like crazy thing for me was um aside from that be- it was because I felt God's presence before, so that was like I-, I understand I'm getting this from the Lord. However, when I went outside, this was like pitch black night, and uh, the service was happening in the evening. So I come outside, and I've seen stars obviously before, but I look into the stars. It's like a masterpiece of just like stars and just wow. like glowingness, and everything just seems so clear. It's like some kind of veil just got like taken off my eyes or something like everything became less hazy less so just like cl- wow. crystal clear clarity yeah and for you is the electricity that came through your body yeah. and that's so awesome and what's uh like the amount of different ways that the holy spirit touches each person just for them to remember that this is me this is how i feel remember me yeah 
you know, remember how this feeling is. This is how I'm going to talk to you for the rest of your life. Remember me. That's so awesome. But Oklahoma, mm-hmm. you started there. When did you start editing all these things? When, when did God give you this oh. like desire to edit? Like, I want to hear about like your start of editing. I know well, with Vitaly, he said that he came over to your house and he was young. He started making his beats. Yeah, yeah. He started, you know, playing around with the programs that I have, you know, to make music. And, you know, eventually uh, he didn't just start coming over because of that, you know, started being friends and yeah. so on and so forth. Uh, in editing, uh, it goes way back when I was very very young six or something six and i don't really? know very, very young i started that like is... doodling on my uh on pieces of paper uh-huh. making animations wow. and then went on to you know those post-it notes yeah yeah oh so you made the little i animation made little animations with wow. that and then i'm like i should step this up a notch so i went on you know on the computer and started being coming those filmmaker <laughs> <laughs> well kind of but it was like a more of a stick figure animation called pivot and oh, i started oh, making i remember that i started making animations with that and I just started getting more in, in, in interested in all this animation and you know, VFX stuff because I'm like, I see all these YouTubers making animations and they have all these explosions. I'm like, wow, I can't, I can't animate that. But, you know, VFX, you can. Yeah, kinda. yeah, definitely. So I started learning Adobe After Effects and... Uh... At six? <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> no. Say, we got a genius you. sitting with us here. <laughs> no, no, no. Like later on, like... It was an on and off thing where I would animate, yeah. and then around the age of like 19, maybe 20, I okay. started going back into it, and I started learning Adobe After Effects, wow. and I started making these little, you know, clips uh, with Vasily, mm-hmm. you know, just Charles, yeah, Charles B. B. Stanley. I, uh, <laughs> I was trying to do these VFX tests and um, see how far I could go, how much I could improve it, and it slowly became into you know the films yeah, that we like yeah. to make you know with stories and using the effects that i have learned and you know build a world around them and stuff so have you ever had anybody come up to you you know you've created some like we sp- spoke about um pieces of art that have a message a biblical message behind them anybody come up to you and be like brother like that yeah. video that film you created has been such like a breakthrough like helped me overcome something or just opened their eyes up to something else that they haven't seen before um i had a few people uh, actually come up to me or message me uh, about how they enjoyed the video and then they were surprised that they had a message at the very end they loved it like it clicked as soon as they like saw the verse yeah. at the very end of the movies uh they would be like whoa <laughs> that actually makes sense like basically it's like the chronicles of narnia it, you watch it as a movie but then it, you realize that the author uh, c.s lewis yeah wrote it as a christian standpoint and mm-hmm. the story of it is basically it, it, like uh it's a metaphor or a symbolic yeah, thing i yeah. guess you could say like it stands for god jesus there and um, sin yeah everything just it makes sense Definitely. And I think those type of masterpieces, there's so much like power in them because mm-hmm. it, it's kind of like reminds me of this story of um, Carl Lentz. He was sharing, uh, I think it was on Instagram or something. He had some friends who were like, uh, I think either drug addicts or alcoholics. And he's like, hey, um, why don't you guys come to a club with me? And they're like, you know, non-Christian. They're like a club. Like, okay, you know, it, their perception of what it's yeah. supposed to be. And you know, um, they come in there, and you know, little did they know, his church that they started out with in uh, Hillsong, New York, hmm. was in a club. So you know, it's kind of like this tactic where you use, um, you know, cinematography to bring people into christ yeah culture because, yeah cultural because people have like this i guess stigma or association with uh christian films yeah um like we were just talking about like fireproof yeah um, yeah like the christian films are not bad like yeah. we as christians we enjoy them like but people that are not christian or atheists or people who just don't know god they look at it and they say it's a joke like i see people who do movie reviews yeah. and when it comes to christian films they just bash on it for some reason, you know. But it's because they don't understand the, like the you know, glory of God, yeah. because it doesn't really give them. It's just like stories about a Christian family trying yeah. to get back on their feet. 
usually. Uh, the way I'm doing it is I'm cr creating a film that would attract anyone, you know, even the people who are not Christians. They would like watch it and then they would understand that there's a message behind it and they'll dwell, they'll look at the message on like, okay, hold on. There's more to this. They'll look it up. They'll try to research more into it probably, you know. Just, yeah. It's kind of like a push. It's a push. It's a seed. It's a seed, yeah. There's, I feel like, with those type of movies, like Narnia, we were just naming um, another good author. I, I know that um, Tolkien, which was a pretty good friend of C.S. Lewis, all, like, the, uh, Tolkien, if you don't know, created um, Lord of the Rings. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, for the longest time, you know, watching it um, as a kid, I was not allowed to because mm -hmm. of the association of uh, like fantasy, all, yeah, the fantasy and all this stuff but little did i know when i grew up older my friends are like you know tolkien was christian and the whole series of lord of the rings has a whole biblical message i to actually it. didn't know that and so that i rewatched cool. the whole thing and i'm like oh my goodness uh, you just, are right it clicks and it makes it sense. clicks yeah so i believe like when you watch certain movies like you're talking about in that uh, type of manner um, that are not directly like, oh, this is Christian, but mm -hmm. like with a Christian basis on it, foundation yeah. wise, um, people have their guard down mentally. Because if you're an atheist, right, you're like, oh, I'm going to watch a Christian movie, right? And, yeah. you automatically, your brain's like, okay, I'm an atheist. I cannot let this affect me. I cannot let yeah, it they close up. And, yeah, they just close off. So they can't be as open to receive mm -hmm. what the whole masterpiece is trying to reveal to yeah. them. Um, versus the other genres yeah. uh, or way of making a movie that you we know, share. You um, know, there was a, the breakthrough. I think it was is the breakthrough. What is the movie? The Christian movie about the soldier. Oh, uh, uh, Hacksaw uh, Ridge. Dunkirk. No, not Dunkirk. It was about the soldier that got. Um, oh, Hacksaw about, Ridge. Yes, yes. The it's one no, it's not Hacksaw Ridge. It's not Hacksaw Ridge. It's uh, is it breakthrough or is it unbroken or is it courageous? No, that's no. A, the cop movie. Oh, it's, well. <laughs> Anyways, it was about a soldier who got trapped in Japan for like 20 years, got traumatized there, was beat up completely and everything else. Uh -huh. And then he came back and he had PTSD. He was struggling through all those things. And at the end, like he went to a, um, what's that? What's that famous guys? The one who just died, the, big, the really big preacher. Uh, Bill, Billy Graham? Yeah, he went to a Billy Graham uh, meeting in California, I think. And he got touched there by God. And wow. like he tried to walk away, he knew what was happening, and he tried to walk away. And as he was walking away, Billy Graham just looked looked at him. He's just like, "Where are you going? Stop!" Wow. And like the whole entire thing just like touched him. And my biggest thing was really um, it's kind of funny because it like impacted my, my marriage a lot when like me and Sarah like do uh, anything at home. It's just like it's funny because it was not even the full meaning of the. Um, whole movie but the whole thing about just like for for the rest of your life always say yes dear <laughs> <laughs> yeah like that just touched me and i was just like okay and like every time like sarah asked me to do something i don't want to do it i just force myself <laughs> take out the trash <laughs> yes dear <laughs> and just go I like and i'm like it just kind of like builds this kind of like in, uh builds this kind of culture in my head like mm -hmm. i need to always say yes dear i need to always like do this so that's like we're a really good part of the movie and like for godfather especially the second one laying down your life for someone else like yeah. most people like the, what's the greatest love what's the greatest act of love to lay down your life yeah for that someone was else. that was the verse yeah, yeah there's like, no greater love than to lay down your own life and so like we that movie by itself just showed people like hey you don't know who jesus is man but guess what that jesus yeah, that he showed the greatest the love at all Definitely. He gave you that greatest love and that feeling of love that you have inside you right now. That's from him. Amen. And even though they they don't know that full entire message, they got the part of it. And it's I see that that seed starts to grow and God starts to push it into their hearts. It's like, hey, you heard it. Yeah. Another thing I wanted to bring up, uh, film is in a, uh, in a sense a different another form of storytelling, right? Yeah. And Jesus loved to tell stories, parables. like parables. Yeah. He yeah. would always have. These stories that would be a metaphor yeah. to the thing he wanted to bring up. He wouldn't. He wasn't just straight up. I mean, yeah, he was preaching, but to the people who he knew he was taught, like the demographic yeah. he was talking to, he knew how to get through them. Yeah, in a simple manner. In a simple manner, by not having them 
sit through a lecture or you know a sermon but he would just tell a story that would have a message and that would impact their lives in a different way they would start thinking about the message and they would start you know it, it would be in their head they won't be able to get rid of hey, it the best one that i can do right, right off the bat is the um uh, king that gives talents to yeah, yeah, servant. Yeah. Yep. like you can make the movie about that yeah, you know? yeah, and like if you guys don't know about that message the, the king gave it uh 10 talents to one servant five talents to another servant <laughs> and uh um one talent to one of the servants and mm -hmm. then the king let, let went away and the one who got 10 doubled it to 20 the one who got five doubled it to 10 the one who got one was scared to lose that one went and hid that talent and talent is a form of currency back in the day Mm -hmm. hid that talent and uh, waited for the king to come back and when the king came back he saw that the one who got 10 made 20 and he's like wow this is good and he gave him a um, reward one who got 5 got made 10 and he gave him a reward and he saw that the one who got 1 got nothing and he's just like okay well I'm going to take your 1 and give it to the guy who made 20 because you don't yeah. deserve this 1 he just buried it and just and so that that like even that could be made into a movie like that one little parable can be made giving into you a, a little movie. nudge for a future uh, project <laughs> hey. i'll get the shell wall buried <laughs> <laughs> you could write the story we'll yeah. make it yeah potential right there you guys you know and the, the coolest thing is that um how god works the talents that he puts into your life when did you start to see like i know that you and vasily got together and like when did you two come together because vasily is a writer like he was sharing it to us about yeah. writing and like you're the filmmaker like he writes you make you make the films and you guys work together like that when did you guys like when did you both of it clicked into your mind like hey we can make this happen well i think it was around like a year before we made the first godfather film that we okay. that we made um we were like uh, we were watching the original godfathers and uh -huh. i just like i'm like it was silly we should make a fan film of this you know our yeah. own our own take and he's like okay and he was trying to ask me what he should like he's the writer he writes these movies yeah so he's the you know the director writer i'm just the producer you know the guy with the camera and uh, i act in it too and edit it so. well come on don't don't downplay yourself <laughs> no 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 like, i mean I, anyways <laughs> <laughs> when was silly was asking me what the topic should be about yeah and we were trying to think of something and then i guess it kind of clicked at the same time like it should be about you know, the a Christian message behind it. Like, take a verse from the Bible and try to make a movie based on that, but also with like a mafia theme, like The Godfather. Yeah. And the third Godfather we're making right now will be the, probably the last in the series, and it'll just keep on going with other films that will have a message about it. So, That's yeah, awesome. it, but kind of clicked uh, a couple of weeks before we started writing the first Godfather. So I'm not sure when that was. <laughs> I, I'm just like amazed, you know, like when we first, I remember uploaded, uh, well, you guys uploaded, um, I just kind of went on YouTube and checked out how many views you guys had, but you guys hit like couple thousand views oh, yeah. in like 50,000. Yeah, fifty thousands uh, or something like that. Film in, forums. <laughs> oh, oh, forty-four. Um, no, no, in, no, no, film forums. Oh, film forums. I would like <laughs> look up every forum there is, or people like having discussion about films, and I'll just share the link everywhere sure. I could find. Wow, wow. And people watched it. You know, they were commenting on the forums too. They're like, "Oh, it was a great movie." You know, if it was like your first one, it's a good job. That's crazy. That's the best. Because yeah. I mean, to think about it, you reached. 50,000 people 50,000 people that's a big crusade yeah that's uh, <laughs> a pretty big crusade like some churches are not even that big yeah like, I hope at least a little percent of those people like actually changed yeah, yeah actually changed but you know that, that's kind of like the whole thing with us as Christians um, yeah, even if one repents the whole you know yeah heaven well, rejoices it's it's like we just have to have that heart to be willing to seed mm -hmm. that one seed and you know if we're not with that person just pray that the lord actually uses that mm -hmm. seed and it actually becomes a big tree and produces more fruit yes. um and i just give you guys props like straight up you and vasily for creating those things um because i mean it's not every person's just like let me wake up in the morning and make a christian movie <laughs> basically um, it yeah. takes time. It takes dedication. It takes resources. Man. I mean, I remember talking with you. You spent like, I can't remember, like a couple 
thousand dollars a grand yeah yeah just for this movie locations props yeah. music all that. and i mean i don't know if other people know but you know fifty thousand seems like a big number but in reality or if you even take into like youtube percentages for yeah, like that's, revenue it's that's barely well. nothing you didn't technically get your return so in a way it's a sacrifice <laughs> To, yeah, it's not about the money. It's about bringing the story to the people and having them hear the message. So, Come on. That's awesome. Yeah. That's the whole entire time. It's the whole entire thing. Um, I want to switch gears a little bit. Yeah, let's go. I want to switch gears a little bit with the uh, way that the podcast is going. Yeah. We heard... Uh, sorry, let's get more comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> so, we heard about Phil's testimony and how God uses his talents in filmmaking and how it's... it's in, um affecting the world around him now last night before i fell asleep this is gonna be like an open little discussion time last night before i fell asleep i was like it was like one around 1 a.m we came home pretty late and we're like yeah. let me just listen to a sermon as i'm falling asleep so i put my ear pods on and my wife is like take them out i'm like no i need to listen to the sermon <laughs> so i'm trying to fall asleep and i can't fall asleep because the sermon is so interesting and I've never heard this say. That's why I want to bring it up today. In Isaiah, I think it was Isaiah 64. Okay. It opens up with this message. God rend the heavens and come down. And I heard this and I was just like, whoa. God rend the heavens and come down. Rend is another form of tear apart. Wow. Slit the heavens open and come down. And he was just like, this is the this is the sermon that we kept going on. This is the prayer that most worship leaders and like revivalists would be praying. God rend these heavens and calm down. And yeah. as he's talking, as he's talking, I thought I thought that it was gonna be about like how to pray and everything else, and like how like we need to rent like we need to ask God to rend these heavens and come down. He's like, now read Mark chapter one. And it says that as Jesus came out of the water, he saw heavens split open and the spirit of God descending on him as a dove. Wow. And the voice came from heaven saying, this is my beloved son in whom I am pleased. And this, and I was like, okay, wow. okay. Let's put the two and two together. God ran the heavens and come down. And God splits heavens open. The spirit comes down and the voice acknowledges that this is Jesus and who he is the beloved so son. Powerful. That's nice. Like the spirit comes down. And so we hear these revivalists, they keep praying and they keep praying about this, this God grant these heavens and to come down. Mm -hmm. yeah. And like, and then you think about it, how violent, how violent the tearing of the heavens would be. And it's, it's the same Hebrew word that was used. I'm, I'm using a lot of uh, things that I learned last night. It was the same Hebrew word that was used at this, uh, whenever um, in John, it talks about the temple uh, being, the temple curtain being ripped open. Yeah, from top. It's the same, yeah, yeah. It's the same words. It's a violent rip. It's the same words that like Brock split in half as yeah. Jesus died. Like it's the same exact word. It's, it's a violent tear. Yeah. And like wow. the Holy Spirit came down. And like if you think about it, the Holy Spirit rendered the heavens and dropped down like a fire onto the disciples that were sitting in the house waiting for the Pentecost day. Yeah. And so it's so good, like how God does this. And like, so I'm sitting there last night and like as I'm falling asleep, as I'm falling asleep, and this is almost like a little testimony time. And it's just like, and I hear, and I hear him say, I hear him say, if we walk around as if we're carrying a dove on our shoulder, mm. do you think that my focus would be on walking or my focus would be on the comfort of the dove so it won't fly away? Wow. That's so good. Wow. If the dove descended in Jesus and rested on him, or Luke, I think, says rested on him. <laughs> Luke, Luke was a physician. He really liked uh, putting the emphasis on things. He just rested on him. Yeah. And like, if the dove rests on us and we keep walking around, as we're walking around, our main focus will it be in walking around or we'll be like, I'm keeping it on us. Don't fly away. Here, here's a little seed, like eat something. Mm. Don't, don't fly away. Wow. And like, you think about this. And so going on forward, 
the Holy Spirit, how it works. There was never a limitation that was set by the Holy Spirit yeah. on what we could do. And this is uh, this is more of an open discussion, but like, where did the limitations come from? Where did the limitations in? Like, okay, Holy Spirit is able. You're only able to do this much. Like, you're only allowed to have this gift. Like, where did that limitation come from? I I mean, if we take it from just historically, right? Historically, um, you take it from the Catholic Church. You take it from Orthodox churches, right? Usually, people's perspective of what is acceptable to God is all based on who they got their information from either first through reading the Bible hopefully that's the way they got it from um, and when they did get it they had it read in a manner where the Holy Spirit was he helping them understand it better because you know there's this thing the Holy Spirit recently told me when I was driving um, the Bible should never be a means to substitute our actual communication with the author. It should mm -hmm. only be a means through which we confirm that we're actually speaking with the author. Yes. And so this comes back to that where, you know, they, they would have read the Bible if they were literate enough back then, or ultimately most people would get their knowledge based from the Pope, from the bishop person, or etc. That's the thing, knowledge equals power. Yeah. And we now in the 21st century, we have all of knowledge open to us. Yep. You can sit there in two years and you'll be a professor because you learned everything by yourself. And, you know, you went a fast pace in school yeah. online. You're a professor. There you go. Here's your degree. You graduate. You're in a master's degree because you worked your butt off for two years. And like you think all this knowledge is open to us. The only limitation that the Holy Spirit has is the one that we put on it. Yeah. We put the limitations, we put the boundaries in place. And so it was just such a revelation for me. Like last night, like I was just, I literally just, just searched up a sermon and I clicked on the first one that popped up and it was just this big revelation. Like, okay, the Holy Spirit gave all of himself yeah. to us. Jesus said, you'll be able to do greater things than I ever did. Yep. Here's all of me. Take me, have me, I'm yours. And we're like, okay, but you're only allowed to do these few gifts here. Yeah. In the setting. And like, if you're walking with a dove and the dove is on your shoulder and you're wanting to fly away, you're giving it everything you can to yeah. not fly away. Same, like, and you're it's. You're nourishing it. Exactly. And mm -hmm. like, your spirit needs to be nourished and your spirit needs to be nourished by the word of God. So th this is more of like my little testimony time. And it was just like, whoa and i'm like it's like 4 a.m and i have to wake up at like six or seven because i wanted to do something else and i'm just like i can't stop listening to the sermon and i started listening at one and like i re-listened it twice and i'm like wow. i can't stop listening to the sermon because like how powerful the holy spirit is on our lives and like yeah. this is the kind of things like uh that, that sometimes come and so i encourage you take care of your dove yeah take care of it because i mean you know you can live this life i'm i'm just thinking back like when i didn't have the relationship with the holy spirit that i have now like my life just looking back like as a movie strip you know phil can probably relate it looked bland it looked black and white it did not look like it had color you know i for whatever reason like the freedom that i have now with the holy spirit because as we know in the bible it says where the spirit of the lord is there is freedom I did not have that. I'd be afraid to do like, for example, go to a church and uh, just clap because, you know, people told me, oh, you're giving glory to somebody else. I'm like, no. Eventually I started understanding like through the Holy Spirit that it's my heart. It's my intent of like what I'm doing that ultimately decides what I'm doing this for. Some people might be, but just because... You know, some people misuse the good thing for bad doesn't mean everybody has to just stop using that good. Exactly. Exactly. And, you know, going on, it's like the Holy Spirit just makes your life that much better. It gives you freedom. It gives you revelation on a daily basis if you need it. Right. You ask the Holy Spirit, like, Holy Spirit, 
I have this situation. Like recently, I uh, was driving on the highway. Shovel flew out of a truck, <laughs> hit my hood, and oh, so bad when I saw basically, picture. yeah, yeah big I was dent. like, yeah. oh, well, hopefully. I'm like, I was just being hopeful in that moment, honestly. I was like driving up to school. I'm like, Lord, please not make any like horrible dents. Technically, it wasn't a horrible dent, so he did answer. However, still had a dent. But it's like I did not regulate to that situation in a manner where it's like I'm starting to cuss, I'm like freaking out, and all this stuff, which is life without the Holy Spirit. Isn't it funny? Because that's what we were talking about last night that we put into yourself. It's going to be coming out first without yeah. your mind thinking. Yeah. You know? If you, if you put in a bunch of worship and a bunch of praises and a bunch of like sermons and a bunch of the word of God into yourself, the first thing that's going to come out is God. Yeah. And not, oh my goodness. <laughs> so it's <sighs> like I'm in this car driving and this is happening. But right when this is happening, I'm listening and I'm just praising the Lord. I was listening to um, Upper Room's song, Something Always Happens When I Bless Your Name. <laughs> and, and, something did happen. and something happened you know and that was the most ironic well ironic i mean like one of those moments in life where um it's like the lord teaches you just be you know? careful guys if you guys are driving in the highway make sure you're not listening <laughs> to something <else. laughs> no but like it just shows like the devil will want like to get a shovel you. flying at you <laughs> you never know you, uh, you know it's yeah. it just happens but i i was like lord whatever it is it, it just happened you know i just accept it I thank you for it. Like mm -hmm. I, 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 and you know, I've shared my testimony with my dad and everything that happened. I just thank the Lord. So I, I, you know, you build up this faith and relationship with the Holy Spirit, where yes. it no longer these things just affect you as much. You just like, okay, it happened. I move on with my day. Me panicking, me screaming, me cussing, whatever, not will not solve the situation. If anything, first, I'm sinning. Yeah, exactly. Second, I'm causing stress, which uh, from a medical standpoint uh, produces a lot of stress hormones, which can cause a lot of diseases. Vasily here can confirm those things as well as a nurse. Um, and then, you know, you know that, that just reminds me of when I crashed my car just after getting married. I bought myself a brand new uh, car, put a bunch of money into it. And like I wasn't low on money, but I was I had enough money to sustain myself. Yeah. And then I decided like, oh, randomly one day I was like, oh, let me just reduce my insurance for a little bit, save up some more money, and everything will be fine. So I literally went from full coverage to one way coverage. Yeah. And Ooh. the insurance company was like, are you sure you want to do this? I was like, yeah, sure, it's it's fine. I'm not Ouch. planning to get into a car accident. And then all of a sudden, like next week, like it just passed the monthly period. And the next week I, you got boomed. Yeah. I <laughs> was driving on, uh, up in Bradenton and all of a sudden, like this car just drove out in front of me out of nowhere mm -hmm. and it was a Jeep and I hit him and he just kept going. Like he didn't even stop. Like my car got destroyed and he just kept going because he didn't have, he didn't even have a license plate on. He was just, I was just like, Oh my goodness. God, like, what am I going to do? Like, what yeah. am I going to do? I know exactly what was going to happen. Like, I knew everything that was going to happen. I was just like, what am I going to do? And, like, I got down, like, within a week. Like, it was just like we got the car settled up. We got all the repairs. And it was, was over, like, f close to $3,000 just to repair what happened. And I was like, that's a lot of money. Like, right now, we're still, like, fresh. We're still a fresh couple. Like, we're, we have money, but we're, we're – that's still a lot of money. But, God, God, yeah. God like, what do we do? Yeah. And like I got down and like as like I'm having this prayer I'm like God what do I do and like this is how like I started to learn how to put God in everything into my family and I was just like God how do I do like you're my foundation like what do I do with this and like I just laid down and like I switched my jobs a few months before that like I switched my job completely and I completely forgot about my 401k that was yeah. my other job and it was like eight or nine thousand dollars was just sitting there and I didn't know about like completely wiped clean and so i switched my jobs and so they didn't know what to do with this money and god's like wake up go check your this account and I'm like, <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> thank That's you lord I, <laughs> and I, I jumped up i went to my computer quickly typed it up like picked up and i was like 
this is just like nine grand just sitting there like with nobody touching like and not only that like they, they kept sending me notices into my inbox on that account that i never saw and they're like hey you left your job like make sure you uh put Take a different account yeah. yeah like make sure you put an account to where we want to transfer so i just put my checking account to them they transferred me my money i'm like <laughs> thank you lord <laughs> wow wow like this wow. is what happens like something does does happen when we bless his name you know yeah it, i mean and it's not like always like you're gonna have bad situations and it's not like always you're gonna have good situations however your surroundings should never determine that inner peace that you have exactly it, it should not it, you like if you're living with the holy spirit and you have that room for him to live in where it's not just him visiting you know uh vlad such preaches a really good message about that hungry generation yeah um it, have a really good podcast too you yeah look them up. check it them out apple podcast hungry gen you guys will be stuck in the podcast for hours yeah <laughs> um and it's like you just have that place for him and you just come into the room and you're like holy spirit you know this happened you exactly know, and, you, and exactly. you just go through it and this is the thing uh without the holy spirit you're just stuck you're stuck you're without guidance I, I made this black uh, and white. yeah black and white I made this analogy recently um, can't remember for who but oh I remember it yesterday um, so one of our friends he was taking this um, exam that was for her becoming master oh, yeah. mechanic or, or technician and he he was on his fourth out of eight tests that he needed to pass and I just said said what was on my heart uh, I'm like let the Lord go before you. And this, like, sure enough, let I God let, take this test yeah, first. Let, He'll tell you the answers afterwards. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, he messages us back a couple hours later after he finished it. And sure enough, Lord made a way for him. And it's this analogy of when we let the Lord go before us, we have this huge jungle we got to go through. But he goes through it. He machetes it all through and creates this path for us. And yeah. we just simply walk in it. Exactly versus exactly. when you're walking by yourself and making these decisions by yourself without the holy spirit you're just macheting it yourself not knowing if there's, there's going to be a snake coming out of nowhere <laughs> some alligator some panther jumping at you and yeah. you know it's, what's going on? i just i just have like this big this big thing like somebody that's going to be listening they like the holy spirit really wants to put an implication like pay attention to him that's on you that's on your shoulder let him yes. who's on your shoulder lead the way because that dove that dove has been higher than you it's yeah. flown the whole entire world and it knows everything yeah. let him lead your way first before you let him go before you yeah let him do it because jesus said jesus said i only do what i see my father do i only say what i see what i hear my father say yeah okay that that's a big thing jesus said jesus came down as the son of man who is the son of man without god nothing yeah who is the son of man without the holy spirit nothing he's just mm -hmm. a regular person yeah. and jesus came down as the son of man he received the holy spirit from god that moment and he in full righteousness mm. started walking not by sight but by faith yeah he saw it he saw it and he saw it and like you, when you let the holy spirit lead you it leads you into a desert just so that you can have three years of outpouring afterwards mm. as jesus did it leads you into a desert for 40 days and all of a sudden you come out a brand new person you come out where your face is shining because you have, we were in the presence of god for, for 40 days like it 40 days i'm just saying just because it's what's written in the bible but like once you start being with the holy spirit your life starts to shape to be like the holy spirit yeah and then like this dove your whole entire personality starts to shape to make sure this stuff is comfortable mm -hmm. you know i had like um friday i had like really a really powerful week monday tuesday when like saturday sunday monday tuesday wednesday thursday on friday i spent almost no time with god mm -hmm. like i spent almost zero time with god and on saturday it showed like i went a whole week i was on fire for god on friday i like i just just wanted to sleep all day I didn't want to do anything. I just wanted to sleep. I wanted to just rest. Clock out. I literally didn't want to do anything. And on Saturday morning, like I woke up and I was like, I feel different. You feel I feel trained. I don't like it. 
Yeah. I don't I'm, like it. And I wasn't doing anything bad. I just feel different. I don't like it. I don't want this. I want to be with you, God. Where Where are you right now? Mm. And it was almost like, well, you, you decided not to spend time with me. So how can I spend time with you? Oh. You know, this is like instant. It's almost like, uh, man, I'm still on fire from what your little brother said yesterday. So a few, weeks, a few weeks ago. A few weeks ago, I just have to share this because this, I, I'm just like on fire from it. <laughs> Andre? Yeah, yeah. A few weeks ago, we were sitting there and uh, a Bible study and I just told everybody, I was like, I challenge you guys. If you guys think that God's not showing up into your life, turn, turn on worship for 45 minutes. For every 45 minutes of prayer that you want to do, turn on 45 minutes of worship. And Andre's like, well, I did it. A few weeks later, he's just like, yes, he, last night he's like, I did it. And after 45 minutes, I'm like, God, where are you? I'm here for you. And God like quickly answered him. He said, what do you mean? I've been here since the start. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so good. And that just like uplifted my whole entire, I was just like, whoa. <laughs> yeah. You just answered so quickly. <laughs> nice. Just because like I said whatever you told me to say at Bible study. And like you responded because of what, what you told me to mm. say. It was so good. So back to filmmaking, back to yeah, business, that, that. back to <laughs> back to the good stuff. Back to the Philly Bauman special edition right here. <laughs> so with filmmaking, as you're making films, as a, you're leading crew, what are some experiences that you've had in your life that have been like conflicts, barriers, walls, sets up that you're just like, oh, I can't get through this. Um, well, the hardest thing to do with making films like this is uh, the people. <laughs> so a lot of people might have different views on what you're, you're making or might have a grudge against someone else on the set yeah or for example not making it on time everyone's there waiting for that one guy who to come an actor yeah. and they're not there for like 30 minutes everyone needs to go places yeah. it's basically kind of like that you know it's yeah. not really um it's like story. regular kind of movie stuff i mean it's not it, professional you know yeah. it's but I feel like uh, in the future, I'll get to the point where it, it gets more time managed and all that. Yeah, stuff. more organized. But in terms of uh, people like not uh, behaving correctly on the set, like, I don't know, uh, being mean to one another. Yeah. And I'm kind of like in charge of that uh, whole thing. Mm -hmm. It's not easy. Um, sometimes I, for those kinds of things, I don't have a, like I have... A tolerance level but it's not yeah like it'll reach to a point where and I'm, i'll just like i'll start stressing out and then and then they'll be like hey calm down you know yeah. but that's i think that would be the hardest part of making films um editing uh there's a lot of moving not, parts to it yeah it's a lot of moving parts but everything else it's pretty much simple uh you know it's if uh writing the story it's difficult in the sense you have to create characters and story, but it's not something that would affect uh, me emotionally or anything like that. So, well, since there is uh, people that are watching, they, you know, we did the same thing with SBG whenever he was here. Like that creative mindset that like just develops when you're from six years old. Uh, like, how would you tell him to pursue that? You know, some people that are trying to pursue that, but yet like their whole entire family is just like hey that's not really a career you gotta watch out buddy you're gonna go broke gonna i mean on the streets, same thing as know? same thing as sbg you know his parents were not approved of, uh, of that but then they started supporting him yeah. same with my parents uh they keep telling me to uh uh just you know try to find an actual job and uh you know leave this childish stuff alone but um eventually they came around and they uh understand like you know it's it's also a uh, profession you know if i keep yeah. going into this it's it's uh, gonna be a career if anything i'm gonna start freelancing you know yeah. it, it, there's always ways to make money with this Definitely. wedding vi videography that's one of those things you know? big, big, exactly big. people like get a lot of money for that Definitely. uh you know they, they they support me now and you know i would be if i'm editing on my computer um my mom like back then she would be like uh, you know, to do something or you know, do, yeah. uh, do well, that's in Russian, <laughs> yeah. do something that would benefit it's worthwhile. you, worthwhile, right? Yeah. Uh, but now she she's supporting me, like, oh, okay, so um, she you know, brings me tea if I uh, if I'm just editing for a long time, oh, and she's like, she, so she just gives me tea and then 
oh, biscuits. <laughs> so I'm like, thank you. It's yeah. nice. That's and, so good. Like the Lord just, I believe he slowly works into people's hearts and, and just so, starts showing. And a lot of times for, uh, I, like, uh, my mom keeps uh, calling me over to uh, the office where the, her computer is. Yeah. And she's like looking on Craigslist for uh, film jobs for me. And, oh, <laughs> dude, that is so know? good. And it's yeah. like, so blessed, <laughs> man. That's, so that's nice. Yeah. Um, what is, so, you, you know, as something that's really awesome is like a vision. You, you, a vision that comes like your vision that like for your film like what has god put on your heart for your vision for for your for this this path that he's leading you on um what do you mean for example but like for sbg he wants to influence people by by rapping like he wants to uh put their into their life like has god shown you a full vision like what he wants you to do with filming and what he wants you to like who he wants to impact through your filming like has god showed you any of that stuff yet well it's basically uh can make keep making videos for youtube because it's accessible for everyone until yeah. um it starts getting you know big so a lot more people will be knowledgeable about me and i'll start actually trying to get these films into the movie theaters and more people will come and, yeah and um yeah keep changing lives that way and eventually i want to try making a live action uh like one of the Bible stories, like on David yeah. Goliath or Samson or something. Even though they already have them, but you know, no, yeah. take my own take on it. And there's a lot of them. That's hey, the, that's, hey. the, that's the thing. So you, there's always yeah. like you can always make more. There's, there's so a, much of them. You know, th today, I mean, we gave the idea about the talent. So that's yeah. a, right. that, that's a pretty active. There's so many stories from the Bible that you could just make a live action version. Yeah, of. definitely. I mean, I I just see like this potential for that kind of stuff like just really blowing up i mean you take like people such as like casey Neistat, right mm -hmm. you've heard about him um, yeah. and he just started out in a basement basically of an apartment with a kid at 16 <laughs> having all just like one of those old vhs type yeah. um cameras you know and slowly and surely he just kept on pursuing pursuing and he was broke for most of the time yeah he had a project where he was on hbo but still it failed um wasn't that popular um and then eventually he just started daily vlogging right and you know there's a lot of daily vloggers yeah. but not all of them succeed but his passion i believe and that consistency and determination yeah he talks about that in his videos is what distinguished him from the others you know um i i truly believe there's this people who really grind and never give up yeah they are going to accomplish something great in this life yeah like I, um when you brought up the question if other people have this passion and they want to go for it if you have an iphone that's <laughs> uh, enough to start you just if you have a, a good story that's what people will be like watching they, yeah a lot of uh like there was a whole movie that was been made using an old iPhone, like wow. six or something, and it's been in theaters. What? But the story was so good that people just like, the budget was like a couple of thousand dollars, and they wow. were they ranked ranked in a couple of uh, million actually. And people were, like what? just really into the story. So, and you could have the best camera, the best microphone, the best setting, light, but the story's weak. People are just gonna leave. They're yeah. gonna find it boring. You know, like these high uh, budget filmers, like from Hollywood. Um, yeah. You know, they they have all these nice cameras, the, the quality amazing, but when it comes to the story, people like they start hating on it. Their ratings yeah, are like at one. Rating five percent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, basically. Oh, so mostly it's you know story, and if you people want to start making films, just start off with the iPhone, just with your friends just yeah. go on that's how i started actually that's when we started nice. making films i didn't have a camera or anything i just had my note three <laughs> that's, nice it's funny um casey nasa basically said the same thing to a lot of people he's like um if you have a passion for starting film you don't need that fancy equipment you got an iphone nowadays and yeah. 1080p at 60 frames per second that's well enough to create a really yeah. good video in our time um that's not saying that uh, good equipment is bad because yeah. as you proceed and keep going 
obviously you'll have more of a passion yeah. and start spending money on these good equipments that will <laughs> enhance your storytelling that will you know have more of yeah. this uh you know it quality re- reminds me professional. of professional um, uh fast and furious quote um <laughs> it's it's not the car it's the driver. It's the driver. <laughs> it's the driver. I don't know if you, know? Feel, if you have if you have like old making ni- that movie is gonna look nice. The nineteen eighty six Honda Civic. It's the driver. <laughs> Yo. Yeah. No, it's what's actually under the hood because like you yeah. lift that thing up and it has like a V eight. <laughs> um, but anyways, this is a nitrous. Guys, we, are, we, are, we are coming to a close to the podcast. Definitely. Uh, getting up to an hour now. Oh wow. But time flies by when you're having so much fun. I know. And I'm yeah. glad we we had Phil on the show because he does Thank so much work. Here. Yeah. so much work behind the scenes and so many things that most people don't even know about and you know it's, it's the thing that the actual quality of work and not only that but also the um sustaining energy that he has for everything he does it with full quality all the time and that's what jesus calls us to do and do everything like you would do unto god yeah and so it's awesome because this is like a true life example he does everything and sometimes most of the time it doesn't even take a cost for it like yeah yeah so this is this is what god calls us to do help each other out keep going pursue your passions and let god guide you and let the dove that's resting on your shoulder never fly away yeah Yeah. so i just want to you know honor phil in this (laughs) kind of ending um because i mean we're doing this podcast and everything and it seems like you know the hosts are really important but you know this can't be nothing without the man who's behind the scenes exactly it's like you know we very often pass trees my friend said one time uh cheggy who is eventually going to be on this podcast um we pass trees all the time but you know they have that important function of producing oxygen that none of us can survive without of so Mm -hmm. from the bottom of my heart i want to just say i honor you brother we honor you i thank you (laughs) <laughs> oh, thank you and also another tip to the people who want to keep pursuing this if you fail just keep going like if you have the calling to do this there's enough if, videos to make it right <laughs> yeah, if, yeah if like people will start like bringing you down like i had a lot of people uh say uh you know stop doing this you're not really good at this um you know but i just kept going and not listen to them i just smile and just keep going yeah so. that's right well this brings us to a conclusion yep. of week number four we will see you guys next week we'll see you guys again on sunday next week i hope you guys enjoyed this podcast and make sure you guys watch all the other ones as well have a good day have a good night and be blessed bye bye